This demo highlights the feasibility of running the complete 5G RAN and core stack on a single gigabyte server running ARM-based 80-core Ampere SoC. The solution comprises of virtualized ORAN and 5G core supplied by our partner Capgemini. This is integrated with Fluido's upper L1, again running in a container. The system is integrated with Benetel's RAN 550 radio unit running in 40 megahertz 2x2 configuration. The demo incorporates a breakout MEC co-located on the same server node. This powerhouse boasts extremely energy efficient ARM technology ready to support the ORAN compliant 5G stack and MEC and can serve as a blueprint for private 5G networks. The demo setup in physical config is pretty simple. It's just a single ARM server connected to Benetel RU. All the components, i.e. ORAN's upper L1, CU, and DU, the NGC core components, are running as Kubernetes ports. The co-located edge cluster is managed by MEC controller instantiated on AWS Cloud. Before Aloki continues to walk us through the demo, let's take a look at ARM and its 5G ecosystem. Cellular communication have been one of the focus areas for ARM for decades, and ARM has enjoyed long-held lead position in 5G and its previous generations. So if you look at any cellular network equipment, there is a high chance of it being based on ARM IP. So 5G technology has a strategic significance for ARM and its IP um, is well suited for various needs of 5G. To start, 5G technology and especially high load use cases such as massive MIMO require much higher compute resources to provide the high bandwidth and low latency it has promised. ARM Neoverse cores and its future roadmap are perfect matches for this. Furthermore, there is a focus on cloudification and virtualization in 5G, which moves the cellular work from ASICs to merchant silicon. ARM is a very active player in this and um, supports various containerization and virtualization platforms. We are porting and optimizing them on ARM CPUs. However, these um, higher compute requirements should not translate into higher energy consumptions. And this is exactly where ARM excels. ARM's low footprint technology guarantees that although you can get more processing power, you do not have to increase your power budget significantly. As for the ecosystem, open RAN movement is taking momentum and alliances like ORAN are streamlining the standardization and integration process between various parties. ARM is an active member of ORAN Alliance and encourages its ecosystem to implement these protocols and create a rich ARM-based ecosystem. As for this software and hardware ecosystem, um, which is strength is a prerequisite of open RAN movement success. ARM has recently launched ARM 5G Solutions Lab in collaboration with Tech Mahindra, which will be an incubator for various ecosystem players to integrate and demonstrate their solutions to interested parties. To recap, here are the advantages of ARM for 5G deployments. One. Through various 5G specific benchmarks we have done, we have seen that given an identical workload of 5G CUDU for a microcell, ARM will provide up to 75% cost reduction and up to 85% power reduction. This is, a, this is an outstanding performance per watt compared to traditional solution and makes ARM the perfect match for VRAN and open RAN deployments. Two. Our Neoverse and its SIMD engines has been tuned to run many workloads that traditionally require DSPs, but nevertheless, it can be efficiently combined with other compute modules in an ASIC to provide you heterogeneous compute support. Three, since ARM Neoverse power consumption and footprint has been reduced significantly, more cores can be packed into an SOC. One result of this is that more workload can run on a single chip. So for example, you can combine 5G RAN and MEC to run on a single chip. And even in private network deployments, throw in a core network, 
into the mix and still have plenty of resources available to run various MIC applications. Four, as mentioned, ARM and its ecosystem have spent considerable time to support and optimize containerization and virtualization platforms on ARM, which are a must in VRAN deployments. Now let's take a look at the partners that helped us in this demo. Capgemini Engineering is the RAN, MEC, and core network provider for this demo. With decades of experience in RAN software development and services, their portfolio covers everything from 5G RAN Layer 2.3 software to full-fledged core networks and edge platforms. The edge platform you can see here from Capgemini Engineering is an enterprise portal to deploy various edge applications and later manage and orchestrate these applications. In the demo, we will be using all these modules, the CUDU software, core network, and edge platform, all ported to ARM and running on a single ARM-based chip from Ampere. Benetel is one of the pioneers of open RAN radios, and they are known for their good quality radio designs. Benetel currently is focusing on providing open RAN RUs, and they are actually one of the few specialist Western RU providers. ARM is integrating Benetel Radio as part of the ARM ecosystem. And today we are integrating with Benetel's latest radio products in our solution architecture. You can see here in the screen RAN 550 indoor RU, which its predecessor was used in our POC that we have published and in the upcoming demo. Benetel radios are available with various frequency band options for different markets for both indoor and outdoor 5G deployments. These 7.2x split ORUs are capable of up to 100 MHz bandwidth, and they implement ORAN, C, U, S, and M planes. At the ARM ecosystem, Benetel's ORU is integrated with Fluido Upper Layer 1 and the Layer 2.3 provided by Capgemini Engineering that we will showcase next. Let's talk about the demo setup and flow. The setup has four components. The MEC controller on AWS, a 5G network in a box on, hosted on a server, a radio unit, and the user device. The 5G stack components are stitched together as Kubernetes pods. The data path and networking is, has a layered approach with network virtualization, interface virtualization, and multi-interface CNIs layered together. The RU is connected directly using fiber, optical fiber. And the UE communicates with the RU over the air. To follow the demo, the process is going to be, we will bring up the 5G stack and demonstrate how um, the different pods are working. We will then try and connect a UE over the air. We'll move to MEC and we'll try and explain the MEC install and config procedure, and follow it by a demo of mobile gaming app enabled via the 5G Edge. Let's get the phone connected to the network in the box. For that, let's first check if all the services, all the pods are up and running. So we do see that all the core enterprise pods are up you see that the basic infrastructure and networking um, containers are up as well. And uh, what we do not see is the, the RAN um, CUDU portion um, running. So it's a clean um, start. So let's go back and start the RAN. In order to start the RAN, we use Helm to start the RAN components. So what you see here is as soon as we um, initiated the, um, the Helm start, we see that the CU control plane, uh, user plane, and the DU, um, both upper L1, which is Fluido, and the DU components are in the running state now. The next stage is to um, is to configure the system. So we start by um, 
configuring the basic parameters for the CUDUN file to run properly. Now we have to connect the L1 to the DU port, so we have to give the correct IP DU IP and we now start the connection with the NGC. Excellent. Now we have to see if the L1 is coming up properly. So with that, we look at the L1 logs. It's still coming up. So give it a couple of seconds. Once we see that the DU um, is connected properly with the DU and it has spawned it correctly, we will now look at the look to check if um, the system sell up happens. It takes a few seconds to reach to that stage and once that stage is reached we will then um, start the RU. We will see a cell indication. Once the cell indication is done we will start the RU. Okay. See everything is okay. Let's start the RU and we should see the RU connect within 30 seconds and we should see an indication for that. All right, excellent. We see that the RU connected properly. Uh, we see the first slot indication and now we go to the phone to see if it connects properly. We have the phone um, connected. We see that the phone has connected properly. As you can see, there is a 5G indication. Let's check if we can play internet. Let's check out a, a movie. Perfect. We see that the UE is connected properly, it can stream data, and uh, we are good to go to the next stage, which is um, running um, a game on the edge. And for that, I'll hand over to Kyle. Kyle. Thanks, Alakik. Hi, hello, and welcome. My name is Kyle Fried. I'm a principal solutions engineer here at ARM. I'll talk a little bit more about the mech today some of its components of it, the files, deployment, and provisioning. We'll go ahead and provision and deploy an application of Mario on the mech, and then I'll go and do it also on the UE. Let's get started. And here we are right now connected to the uh, mech interface via the web browser. We're connected to the cloud machine on the dot .105. And let's go ahead and start the process of onboarding and, and provisioning. First, let's check the edges. Currently right now, nothing is currently connected. So let's go ahead and add an edge. Um, I have some YAML files that we're gonna be using here. I'll go and describe those here in a second. So we have some information about the IDs, resources requirements, radio cells for serving, and then all the different endpoints, probes, app manager, image manager, locations like that. And then we have some information here for Kubernetes that's gonna be the orchestration for all this. Let's go ahead and push that. Let's view those edges currently onboarded. So let's move on to onboarding. 
And let's go ahead and check. There's no apps currently, so let's go ahead and add one. We have the Super Mario app that I'll go be adding here in just one moment. Okay, so we have information here, such as the app ID, key, uh, app key, information about it. And let's go ahead and deploy that. And let's start with provisioning. Let's take that application we just onboarded and provision it to the system. And submit it, currently pending. Let's go ahead and refresh it and it's running. So now let's take that information off of here and let's play Super Mario. And here we go. Now let's bring back some childhood memories, huh? Okay, let me go move on to the UE now. Give me one moment. And here we are on the UE. Let's go to the EC broker now. Here the EC broker shows information of how it's connected. It's connected to the dot 105, which is our cloud instance. And then the MNCs and MCCs, the 1111. Okay. Now let's head to the application, Super Mario. And here we go, we have a URL to the dot 40, which is our edge. We'll be using that shortly. Let's go to settings. We have the app ID, app key, and the discovery information. That is, that's what we mentioned here on the Mac. Okay, let's return back to the main screen. And let's click on that link. Take us to Super Mario here. We changed the orientation. And we have Super Mario running now. Okay, um, there we go. Super Mario is now running on the UE. Um, thank you very much for attending. I hope to see you very shortly. Thanks.